So now we will deal with the treatment of hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia means that we have a high level of potassium in the blood. The normal level is between 3.5 to 5.5. When we have a moderate hyperkalemia, which is between 5.5 and 6.5, then it's very dangerous. And if we have severe, so that means anything above 6.5, then it's even more serious because we can die. We can die there of the most common symptoms of heart problems, which is conduction problems, arrhythmias, and muscle weakness. These are the most severe symptoms. And we need to now divide the treatment into three groups. The first group is emergency. This means that the patient needs to be treated immediately. The second group is promptly, which means that the patient can be treated within six hours. The third group is slowly. That means we, can, we have some time. So we have emergency, promptly, and slowly. Emergency, promptly, and slowly. Emergency means that we have symptoms of hyperkalemia, which are, which are muscle weakness or we have uh, uh, heart problems or the level is severe, which is above 6.5 millimolar per liter of potassium. Or we can have a moderate level, which is 5.5 to 6.5, but we also have renal, renal disease and we also have tissue breakdown, which is rhabdomyolysis, for example, or crush injury or tumor lysis syndrome. What about promptly? Here we have a level of 5.5 to 6.5. This is a moderate level. And we also have a renal problem, but we don't have any tissue breakdown. So no rhabdomyolysis. This is, this is treated promptly. So the difference between emergency and promptly when we are dealing with a moderate level of 5.5 to 6.5 is that we have tissue breakdown in, in emergency and we don't have any tissue breakdown in promptly. Otherwise, the difference is, as we said, that we have a severe level in emergency, which means more than 6.5, or we have symptoms of muscle weakness or rhythm disturbances of the heart. That's it. What about slowly? Slowly is when we have a lower level, like a normal level, lower than 5.5. We maybe have five. That's pretty close to a, to a hyperkalemia, but, but, it's, but it's not so serious, okay? And we have some time to treat it. Or we have, uh, let's say, higher level, moderate level, but we don't have any renal disease. In these cases, we, we treat it slowly. And now let's turn to the uh, specific th treatment. In emergency, when a patient is em uh, in uh, emergency state, that means we have a higher level on 6.5 or we have symptoms or we have 5.5 to 6.5 with renal failure and tissue breakdown. Then what we do, we give insulin. Insulin, as we know, will uh, uh, move potassium from the blood into the cell. And therefore, insulin is very good because if you move potassium from the blood, then there will be lower amount in the blood. And we have hyperkalemia in this patient, so it's pretty good if we move potassium from the blood because then the hyperkalemia will lower, so it will be lower amount of potassium in the blood. And now we have more in the cell, but that's not the problem. Of course, if we give insulin, we need to give glucose. Why? Because insulin moves also glucose away from the blood and it will be hypoglycemia. We will have a too low of glu glucose in the, in the blood and that's not good either. So it's very important when you give insulin, please give also glucose. But of course, if the glucose is too high, if it's already 250 milligram per deciliter, there's two units. We can use either milligram per deciliter or millimole per liter. If it's more than 250 milligram per deciliter, then we are not allowed to give glucose because it's so high already. Because this is, for example, a diabetic patient. 250 milligram per deciliter can also be 13.9 millimole per liter. That's another unit. It's not so important, but there's different countries use different units. And this means now that we, we, we gave insulin. What can we give also? Uh, the, we can give also calcium gluconate. Calcium gluconate. And calcium gluconate uh, is given 1000 milligram. Calcium is very good because that will also help in reducing this potassium. So calcium gluconate 1000 milligram can be given in peripheral vein because it's not painful, because there exists also calcium chloride 
and that is painful for the peripheral veins, that has to be given in central vein. But we prefer calcium gluconate. It's not painful, it can be given in the peripheral vein, and this will be given then in 10 milliliter of 10% in three minutes. Okay, so in three minutes we give this, and if uh, it's not functioning as it should, then, or it's not decreasing the potassium, then you can repeat it uh, after five minutes. So, what about insulin? I forgot to say the, the doses here. So if you look at the doses, we have 10 units, 10 units of insulin, of regular insulin, in 500 milliliter of dextrose solution. Dextrose is this glucose, as we said, insulin together with glucose. So 10 units of insulin, regular insulin, in 500 milliliter of 10% dextrose. And this will usually decrease the potassium level by one millimole per liter. So if we had a person with emergent case of more than 6.5, let's say he had seven, then we will decrease it into uh, decrease it to six by giving this insulin. So it's pretty, pretty effective. And when you give insulin, it usually, the effect starts in about 10 minutes and then it reaches its peak uh, at around 30 minutes, a half an hour, and then it, in, then it lasts for about six hours. So this is, this is approximate. This is depending on the person's weight and so on. But remember, starts at 10 minutes, reaches its peak at 30 minutes, and then it lasts uh, until six hours. Good. That was uh, then uh, insulin, gluco uh, insulin and uh, calcium gluconate. Good. What can we give more? We have something called uh, gastrointestinal exchange, cation exchange, um, which means that the uh, medication that we give, for example, patiromer, patiromer, it's a funny name, we give 8.4 8.4 gram of this patiromer and it's, it will exchange the cation. It will exchange calcium with potassium. So we will bind potassium because we have a lot of potassium in hyperkalemia. We'll bind potassium and then uh, release the calcium. That means that we have now uh, an exchange in the gastrointestinal tract. We gave insulin, we gave uh, also this uh, calcium gluconate and these three together should be enough for a fast for a fast treatment the, the fastest treatment that we can uh, do is insulin and calcium gluconate and then we will add this uh, patiruvir and then we will add diuretics diuretics is also used for example loop diuretic or tz diuretic also excrete a lot of potassium and then the last thing that we can do if if not if these are not working as if they should hemodialysis this is the most effective one but we don't want to do hemodialysis for everybody but hemodialysis is possible okay uh, good what's the difference now uh, we said that we have those patients which are treated promptly what do we give here or or rather what do we not give here we don't give insulin and we don't give this calcium gluconate so in emergent state we give insulin and calcium gluconate but in promptly we don't do that we only do this uh, uh, this patiromer this gastrointestinal exchange uh, cation medications or if the renal problem if the if the kidneys are uh, not really functioning as it should then we can give uh, then we can do hemodialysis hemodialysis and if the hemodialysis cannot be done within six hours because i don't know there's no expertise there's no uh, doctor available or there's no center because this is a small uh, hospital then please start with this patiromer which is this gastrointestinal exchange binder and if if uh, if and then we win some time and then if we have this uh, hemodialysis available then we do hemodialysis so hemodialysis should be done if we have a renal problem but until we get there we can start with the patiromer okay and it's important that now that when we do this hemodialysis uh, oh, we, we should not measure the potassium directly after because that will be a false measurement because the potassium will be actually high directly after it's called rebound hyperkalemia because uh, the the potassium should be measured like one hour later 
because we don't want to see this rebound hyper hyperkalemia because that's that's false it's it's not true so uh, just remember that so don't be surprised if you do hemodialysis and you still have a high amount of potassium of course uh, with all the treatments in general we need to find out which medication is causing hyperkalemia because medications can cause hyperkalemia so please take a chart and look at the medications of the patient and if you see that he takes any type of renin angiotensin aldosterone system medications this is abbreviated as RAAS RAS system these are ACE inhibitors that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ARB which is angiotensin 2 receptor blockers or aldosterone antagonists or aldosterone receptors blockers or potassium sparring diuretics so if he's taking any of these four then please reduce the doses of this or stop the medication if you can or if he's taking digitalis or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs also reduce the dose or stop the medication if possible so once again if the first thing that you do in all the cases you check the medication and stop that medication don't give that medication anymore okay and of course if you uh, want to find out the cause of hyperkalemia that would also be smart to do before you start any treatment and if you find a cause then you can uh, reverse it by 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 treating the cause of it okay but when we're talking about emergency these are levels as we said more than 6.5 and the patient has symptoms we we don't have so much time so if you don't find the cause within minutes then 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 you need to start to treat it with as i said insulin with glucose and this uh, calcium gluconate that that is the first thing you do by emergent emergency and uh when we have uh, the causes, we have stopped the medications, we, have gave, uh, we gave this patiromer and everything, then, then, then this should be, uh, should be uh, in the normal range. The potassium should get into the normal range, usually. Now, let's turn to the slowly, slowly patients. This means that we have time, okay? There's no emergency. The, the levels are almost in the normal level of potassium and the patient has no symptoms. There's no renal problem here. What we do here is also we stop many medication. We look at the causes of why is this um, potassium almost in the high range. Then stop these medications or stop the causes of that. And of course, uh, we, we have to discuss diet. And there's a video I made about which uh, foods have high level of potassium and then please don't eat so much uh, from these foods and uh, that's it pretty much so to conclude we can say that we divide it into three parts we have those who have emergency we give calcium gluconate we give uh, insulin and the insulin dose that we said was 10 units in 500 milliliter of 10% dextrose, so a glucose, and you're only allow, allowed to give glucose if the level is less than 250 milligram per deciliter or less than 13.9 millimole per liter, then you're allowed to give this dextrose, so 10 units of insulin in 500 milliliter of 10% dextrose. The calcium gluconate is 1000 milligram, so you give it 10 milliliter of 10% in three minutes and you can repeat this if it's not if it's not decreasing the potassium and then when we have done that in the emergency then we have some uh, more time because this, these two are the most important to give quickly and then we have we give this uh, gast gastrointestinal exchange binders like patiromer 8.5 gram then we do give diuretics like loop diuretics and thiazide diuretics to excrete a lot of potassium and then the last one if it's these are not functioning then hemodialysis okay and these were in patients which had uh, 6.5 or higher level of potassium or they had symptoms of muscle weakness or heart rhythm disturbances uh, when we're dealing or the third case was that we had a moderate level like 5.5 to 6.5 but we had a renal disease together with a tissue breakdown like rhabdomyolysis then you give these medications in promptly that is within six hours then we had this moderate level of 5.5 to 6.5 with renal 
renal disease but with no tissue breakdown in this if the renal problem is there then you give hemodialysis if the hemodialysis is available within six hours if not then you start with patiromere until we get a hemodialysis if the renal there's no renal problem then you just start with the patiromere or with, with medi stop the medications or find the cause of the disease and so on the last part slowly we have a normal level around 5.5 or we can even have a moderate level but there's no no stress we have no symptoms and there's no renal disease and so then we do this medic stop the medications that we mentioned uh, i will mention them once again ras medications renin angiotensin and aldosterone receptor um, uh, aldosterone uh, system uh, medications like ac inhibitors arb uh, receptor blockers and this um, aldosterone receptor blockers and potassium sparring diuretics this one or digitalis or non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs stop these medications and then, then then you should be fine together with a diet that is that is low in potassium so that's it i thank you very much for listening